Letters of credit are typically used in markets that are a little bit more risky areas so would, would be China, uh, Southeast Asia uh, areas, uh, for example, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, places like that. We've seen significant pickup in Korea. Uh, I think that's just a fact of uh, we're just doing more trade there. Uh, the Middle East is an area where we do a lot of letters of credit. Certain uh, European countries now that Europe has sort of fallen on some hard times, uh, Spain, Italy, Ireland, places like that. Certain countries in Africa, uh, Nigeria, South Africa, places like that. And also in some countries in Latin America. Uh, Latin America, we don't see as many letters of credit, but uh, for, for new, new business, uh, for a company who's selling to maybe Colombia or Mexico for the first time, typically see letters of credit, but not as much in Latin America, but primarily in Asia and the Middle East and, and India as well is another big one. An export letter of credit for an exporter is going to ensure that they receive their payment. The company is going to get that letter of credit and when they receive it, they'll start to build the product, get the product shipped, they'll submit their documents to the bank, and once the documents go through the, the, the banks and they review them, then they're going to get paid. The nice thing for an exporter with a letter of credit is they're not relying on the foreign buyer to make payment, but they're relying on that foreign bank. So it significantly reduces that risk. The bank must pay as long as the documents are presented and are in order. The foreign bank has to pay. There is, there is no situation where they, they cannot, unless there are discrepancies found on the documents, which then can usually be worked out and they can usually be fixed. An import letter of credit for an importer can be used in a few different ways. The best thing here for an importer is it gets them away from a cash in advance situation. So where they would have to send money overseas and then wait and hope that the foreign supplier ships that product. We often hear that when you're dealing in cash in advance, products may not be there on time, uh, they may be late, and also you have no recourse in the event that there is a product dispute. With an import letter of credit, you mitigate that risk from a you know, certainty that now you're going to ensure that you're going to get a product and you also hold that money in your account a lot longer. So you're not sending money overseas hoping that you get something with an import letter of credit. You know that you're going to get that product, but that money doesn't leave your account until there is proof that shipment, ha shipment has been made. If we receive a phone call from a new customer who's looking to issue letters of credit with us, us issuing a letter of credit is going to require some type of a line of credit or a cash collateralized account, something like that. That can take a few weeks. The uh, company has to be reviewed by our internal credit side uh, and things like that. Maybe two to three weeks, uh, depending on you know, the credit of the company. Uh, from the trade finance side, in terms of getting that letter of credit issued, that's very quick. From the time that we get that letter of credit to the time it's issued, uh, maybe uh, a day, maybe two days at most. But typically, if we get it in by, by lunchtime or so, it's same day. On the export letter of credit side, again, that's something that we're going to be receiving from a supplier, a buyer overseas. If the letter of credit does call for confirmation, and confirmation is where the bank can uh, take on the foreign risk. Uh, confirm it, confirming the letter of credit allows you as the exporter to look at your local bank here at, for the payment as opposed to taking on foreign bank risk and foreign political and country risk. However, many banks have policies when it comes to confirmation because they are taking on that risk and it's essentially almost a, a, a loan. So you know, banks will typically want to have some type of relationship with you, whether that's a deposit account, a line of credit, something like that, in order to confirm a letter of credit. But again, it's a case-by-case -case basis, uh, and it's also going to depend on the market that you're, you're selling to as well. There are some countries that banks will not confirm a letter of credit. Of course, those will be your embargoed countries. Also, countries like Venezuela, some of the countries in Africa, um, Bolivia is one that, that we tend to, to stay away from, Belarus, and the bank has to be right as well. So, uh, you know, confirmation is definitely something to look into in certain markets. Uh, there's going to be an extra cost for, for you on that. Uh, but we do a lot of that, and uh, it seems to work very well for the customers, and uh, it's, it's very good insurance for them.